have to bring a joint to gig one of these days because some of you guys are just too damn nervous. Anyway, that was Tim Young. <laughs> oh, clap. He didn't deserve it. Um, coming up next is a very, I guess maybe a, a very interesting comic. I saw he asked me if he wanted to be on the show one time. I was like, no, I was looking for a broad. But um, he sent me a link, and you know, I was actually very interested in the, you're gonna do this crazy stuff right yeah. Yeah. it's very interesting you guys you guys are gonna be you, these guys laugh uh, you, but we'll talk about that in a little bit Perth Odu E D Oma or whatever that means is a seasoned comic currently celebrating his 81st year which is bullshit um, in in the industry um, he acts as president of a merry band of com comics who operate under the name off the wall at the University of Maryland you might recognize him from his character Timbler in the recent blockbuster National Treasure for Return of the Treasure Goblin. <laughs> I like it. <It's laughs> <laughs> Comics, this is the kind of intro that I want. Complete bullshit. I like it. I really do. I do. I appreciate that. It's, it's not, Timber, it's not bullshit. <laughs> what did you decide to get into, get into stand-up? Well, um, it all started when I was seven years old. Uh, what, I, three years ago? Yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway, I was at my uh, friend Barbus McTigley's uh, 31st birthday. I was seven years old, and um, <laughs> there, there, the older boys yeah, like the, <laughs> there was a clown there, um, and a clown at a 30 a 30 year old birth 30 year old guy's birthday. Yeah. Um, I was if like, you I, pee, I, no, 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 no. Right. you go ahead and I pee. Just, Let it go. I'm so, I, no, no, no. I, I, I get kind of emotional t telling okay. this story. I love it. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the, the clown, he, 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 he pulled a hamstring, and <laughs> as as he lay dying in my arms, uh, thank you. He, he told me, uh, Perth, you. I just, I have a dying request, and I, that is, I want to touch you <laughs> with, with my humor. And so that when you are older, you can touch pregnant men, women, and children with your own. Uh, and uh, so I decided to carry that out for him. <laughs> oh my god, that was a touching story. Damn it, god damn it. What the fuck? Oh shit. So, you have an interesting character. You have a really, really interesting character. What made you, what made you develop those kind of right, really interesting char characters? Uh, it was just, well, the thing is, I have an overactive bladder, so. <laughs> every time I, it's strange, every time I go to the bathroom, bam, bam, right here, right, right there. <laughs> just hits me. Right when the stream hits the water, New character. Are you sure the stream is Just, hitting the water? Because um, you know, it sounds like you have you need to have your penis corrected well, or something. Nah, I mean, yeah. My girlfriend was <laughs> was yeah, she was actually my girlfriend who was telling me about that earlier. But uh, I disagree. I opt to disagree. You're not dating RuPaul. <laughs> Let me just, but tell me a little bit what 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 do you guys do? What kind of shh, behind the set? You had your chance to talk, shut the fuck up. <coughs> Thank you. Now tell me what <laughs> what was it about? What was it about? What kind of comedy do you guys actually perform when you're on stage? It's 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 pretty, you know, ma main well, we range from the mainstream generic stand-up comedy, just one-liners, uh, over to stories. Some people do stories and then some people do a little bit more like me. I do a bit more musical. I thought it was very sort interesting. That's kind of why I wanted you on the show because when you hit me up, I was like, "Nah, I need to," because I like to balance on my right, show with, right. with, with, you know, in a sexual way, in a racial way, and all kind of stuff. But I didn't have any women on the show, so I wanted to have some women on the show, <laughs> and I didn't. So you hit me up, and I was like, "You kind of look like a woman, so I might as well just throw you on there." Of course. And you were and you were interesting too, so I kind of like that, you know. So I figured, you know, maybe I'll just hit the bar, get like the little hermaphroditic thing, and get some of the like the little funny thing going on. <laughs> so you know. I'm glad you're here. So tell me, tell me just a little seriousness. In all seriousness, where are you from? I'm actually from Rockville originally, oh, really? Maryland. Almost local. Yeah, but uh, right now I'm in College Park because I go to Maryland. How many times have you been robbed since you've been there? Uh, 
I've lucked out because uh, these mutton chops make me a little less feminine. Th well, a little less feminine, and a little more psychopathic. So. Oh, okay, I like that. You know, one of these and days when one of these days when your when your testicles fall, you're gonna get some. You right. know, and then the mutton chops will actually fill in, and yeah, you'll be yeah. like, you know, for real, it'll be, it'll yeah. be great. And I'll, I can't wait to see your humor at that point in time. Let me ask one of these questions that <laughs> she sent me. Where do you see your comedy going next? Well, I'm actually, I'm devising a routine where I go out in the middle of the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm... International waters? International waters on a boat uh, to entertain these creatures of the sea like the mermaids and the porpoises and the twipplers and flamidus. Like and that. Um, f because I feel that that's a market that is still untapped, you know, and I feel that I can rush my way into there and get, get lots of money. Because that's all that so matters. So there's big money in international waters talking about, so you, well, you like Jacques Cousteau, like, I mean, well, Jacques yeah. Cousteau Jr. gets like entertain on the uh, Callisto and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And he, he was the, he started it all. The, Submarines. They're gonna love you on that ship because ain't no women. <laughs> just yeah, grow the mutton chops out. Tell them I realize it's going on. I'm just, just messing with you. What, how do you describe the, the, the act you're gonna do? I actually asked you to do it personally because I saw it. I, I thought it was very interesting. Describe it just a little bit. Just, I mean, we only have a few, like, like a couple minutes left. Describe it. Describe it. What, what, are, what are people gonna expect? What are some of the people who haven't seen it gonna expect? Uh, uh, bubble wrap teeth that. It's all. Uh, sometimes I refer to my comedy as a uh, Polly Popper comedy, where people have uh, the audience, their teeth become bubble wrap, and I let a parrot fly out into the audience and pluck it out, popping everyone's teeth, and that's that's my best description. Of I like the description. I like see. I like I like interesting acts, and that's why I wanted to have you. I do. I do. You should, you should see. We're stash stash. Who's over there sleeping? Was on the show last. Was on the show last time, and I'm gonna have him back because he does it. If you did you see? Oh, that? I saw it. You saw it. Yeah, it, it was, was incredible. Hilarious. Yeah. It was hilarious. I want to have him back. He did a strip tease. You don't see too many middle-aged guys take their clothes off on television. Uh, yeah, I wish you and would. And then like rest of it, <laughs> and have like a, a an audience full of men hoop and holler. Audience full of straight men. I'm sorry, hoop and holler <laughs> at at the side of it because it was that funny, and. I don't encourage you to take your clothes off, but hopefully it's going to be in that realm of craziness. I, yeah. And when we come back, Perth Obadibalubo, whatever his name is, is going to XO you exactly what I saw, and hopefully, you know, you'll enjoy it as much as I did. I'm lame, you may think I'm crazy, but I'm here to give you lesson about car safety. So sit your butts down and shut the heck up, cause I'm gonna speak to you and speak from the gut. <laughs> Hi kids, my name is Carpy the Car, and I'm here to give you a lesson on how to avoid machines of death like me. Cause when you're a car, your life is exhausting and it... <laughs> I don't know if you heard, I just made the best pun ever. Because <laughs> I said, when you're a car, your life is exhausting. <laughs> and cars give off exhaust. That's got to be the best pun <laughs> in the world. Now watch me dance. Now you might notice that I'm a better dancer than Snooky Gaga. <laughs> That's because I taught her how to dance on the set of Slumdog Millionaire 2. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. I've got an idea how to make a mark. I'm gonna teach you kids how to parallel park. Just back your trunk up on the dance floor and make those lady cars scream more, more, more. Here I come! Get ready, pay attention guys, this will win you a woman. Oops, I'm just a clumsy parallel parker here. <laughs> Uh, that's that's motor oil. Uh.
it's my time of the month. Uh, uh, could we get some pepper towels or a sponge to soak that up? Uh, put sand there. Uh, and give me some cranberry juice. Here's a little. Gotta, gotta wait for my cue. Here's a little trick that's slick and easy. Use it whenever you're getting sleepy. Airbags are big, soft and simple, so <laughs> crash your car when you need a pillow. Oh, I'm so tired. I wonder, oh, that's right. That's what Perth told me. I <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> good thing I have my airbag. Slice them up, slice them up. Because I like the taste of human meat, human meat. I say so good. Eat it up. Uh, me that can't be beat. <laughs> I'm transforming. Oh. Oh. I'm an SUV that eats up the little cars because they guzzle the gas that goes into my gut. All the other cars are weak and thin, and I'm a daddy car, and they need discipline. Son, why didn't you polish the brass? I told you to polish the brass, but but dad, no butts about it. The only butts you'll be getting are on your face. We're gonna get Aunt Bertha to sit on you, and you don't want that. She's a big lady. <laughs> why can't I teach you to hate? Because I'm a beetle, all I know is love. Oh, get back to the potato fields. We're getting through a famine right here, son, and you're... Tom Foolery ain't helping. I did it. I made a fool of myself. I embarrassed myself in front of an audience. That's what you asked for. Now I just want my son back. No, cut the music, cut the music. I know you're watching. I know you're out there. I just want my son back. We had a deal. Now give me back my son. I just want my son. I just want my son. Give me back my son. I know you're watching. I just want my son. I just want my son. And that was uh, from a uh, a movie called Shakespeare the Musical, which comes out this summer in theaters to a theater near you. Thank you. Let me get myself. <laughs> 